Hi, this is Kathy from Craft with Kathy. Thanks for joining me this evening. I'm coming at you live from the suburbs west of Chicago. Drop me a line, let me know where you're viewing from. That would be cool. It's Friday, we all made it through the week. How wonderful is that? And I have a little project here that's perfect for wintry weather. And if you're a fan of snow, this is probably right up your alley. Drop me a line, let me know where you're viewing from. I'm gonna actually be doing this on a chalkboard using our chalk paste so that I can make it for the season and when I'm tired of it, basically just erase it and reuse my board for something else and reuse my transfer next year or do it on wood or do it on something else and maybe make it permanent. I have those options. And I decided before I even started on this project or while I was kind of contemplating it, I couldn't make up my mind between these two ribbons. They're close. One is like a poinsettia in the white and silver. Um, and the other one is just kind of like some squirrels in silver. And I was trying to figure out which one should I choose. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to use both of them. What the heck, right? Live dangerously, recklessly, mix and match. I'm going to do somewhat of a, well, I can't say a messy bow, but I'm going to mix up my ribbons a little bit here. And I think I'm going to get actually started making the bow. I basically took um, a couple um, lengths of ribbon, one about 12 inches, 13 inches, and one about 14 inches or so, and just basically hot glued them together. And then I'm going to put this in the back, you actually center my hot glue area in the back so it doesn't show up here. Just kind of get that all in the back. If you're new to chalking, drop me a line. Let me know if you've never visited my um, page before. Let me know so that I could give you an appropriate welcome. We're all friends here. Feel free to comment as we go along. If you have any questions, just drop them in the comment box and I'm happy to get back to you. If I don't see them as I go along, I will um, respond after the video's over. Okay, and then I these are my smaller length. These are my 12 inches, so I think that'll go fine. And I'm just going to basically alternate them. And let's see, I've got the poinsettia on top, so I will do this the same way here. I just want to know where the back was. Okay, so I'm just going to stack them. They're pretty close in size, which is fine. And um, then I'm going to fold them in half to find my center. And I am going to use... Um, could use a zip tie, but I'm going to use um, actually a pipe cleaner just to come in here and kind of scrunch them together a bit. Kind of squeeze them and then I'll manipulate them a little bit. Oh, maybe I'll just actually even try tying this and um, then put them on the ribbon. I'm going to do the ribbon across the bottom, or at least that's the intent up front. We'll see. Sometimes things change as you go along. Well, that didn't scrunch anything, did it? Okay, let me kind of redo that. Not the look I was actually going for. Let me untie and retie or whatever. Actually, I actually have normally some thinner wire that I really like using, and um, it works really good. But I was out of it, so I said, ah, pipe cleaner will do it. And it's just not working as I expected. Okay, this is probably fine. Just want to kind of scrunch it up a little bit, make sure that it's in the middle, and then basically poof up the bows when I'm all done, but I'm not quite ready for that step just yet. I want to get this a little bit more centered. 
Ooh, I'm a little off center. <laughs> Probably a little off center on a lot of things today. Okay, this should do it. So I'm just pulling them in opposite directions and once I've got that done, I'll kind of poof them up a little bit. And this will just be just a little accent or a little embellishment to the surface. And I'm thinking that I'm going to use our Shimmer Frost Paste and our Ocean Mist for a little hint of blue and then our Shimmer Silver. I love using the shimmers for anything like this to really give it a little bit of dimension and shine, if you will. Okay, kind of got this pulled apart. I'll do a little bit more fluffing when we're ready to add this. and a little bit more straightening it out. Sometimes your bows can look hopeless and all it needs is a little bit more poofing and finagling of the, the loops and then all of a sudden it's perfect. So I will put this on aside for now and get on with the project. Okay, this is a transfer. It's called We've No Place to Go, since we've no place to go. Our transfers are kind of like silk screen, but not. They're made out of vinyl, which is the teal, and silk screen. Did I, I said our transfers, I don't think, maybe I said our, our silk screen. Our transfers are kind of like stencil, stencils, but not. They're made out of vinyl, which is the teal, and silk screen, and you're seeing through the silk screen to the backer. They are adhesive backed, and the silk screen allows us to get a very nice definition with the wording, the fonts, and any images. Nice, crisp, clean, and they're reusable eight to 12 times or more. And if you make a mistake when you're applying it to chalkboard or dry erase or mirror or glass or metal, all you have to do is spritz it with a little bit of water to remove it and do it again. And if you make a little oops on part of your project, just wipe that part off and do it again. Our chalk paste goes on liquid, but dries to a hard finish. Okay, I'm just taking this out of our envelope. All of our transfers come in a little cellophane envelope that has instructions on how to use them and how to clean them on the back. And like I said, our transfers are reusable eight to 12 times or more when properly cared for. Our paste is water soluble which makes clean up a snap, meaning that all you have to do is rinse this transfer in water. Best done at a sink is the easiest way to actually do it. Um, and you could either massage the chalk paste off with your fingers or use one of our board erasers and just kind of rub it off. And once you have the silk screen all cleaned off and you have all the chalk off of it, you just set it to dry. When it's dry, you put its back around and then you put it away for storage. It's as simple as that. Now this is a brand new transfer that I'm using, and this is a fuzzing cloth. It's a cloth that has one side that's microfiber, the other side that's teary. And this is used to deliberately apply lint to your transfers. If you do not have a fuzzing cloth, no problems. Just use a towel or a shirt or a pair of jeans or a sweater, whatever. The idea is we want to deliberately apply lint to the back so that it does not stick as snugly as it would otherwise. We want to actually diminish the adhesive a little bit, and then when we clean it, we'll remove that lint to renew the adhesiveness. And I'm just trying to lift this off of its little backer. Usually if I roll my fingers off of it, over it, I can kind of lift it. And as you can see, the adhesive side is shiny. 
this is its little carrier sheet or backer sheet. One side of it is glossy, shiny, kind of like a freezer paper. The other side is dull. We always want the glossy side to go up against the adhesive side of the transfer. And that keeps the transfer from sticking to anything else, like another piece of paper or your desk or a table or whatever, right? So I'm just putting this on my fuzzing cloth, lifting it up. I'm going to put it back down, fuzz it again. You don't want to, you want to take care that your transfer doesn't get stuck to itself as you do this. This is a 12 by 18 inch transfer and I'm going to put it one on our um, white frame chalkboard. And I think I'm going to fuzz it one more time. Okay, let me get my board up here. And I just want to make sure that I have my hang, my little hanger, my sawtooth hanger at the top when I put this on here. Now, if I don't get this right at first, it is repositional, repositionable. Just lift it up and do it again. But I am actually going to put it more towards the top because I am going to be putting some ribbon at the bottom here. So I'm just basically butting it up against the frame. I want to make sure there isn't any air bubbles underneath my... Yeah, I got an air bubble right here. I don't know if you can see it, so I'm just going to lift up and smooth that back down. I want to make sure there's no air bubbles underneath my silk screen at all because then my paste won't go through evenly. And usually I can feel them easier than you actually see them. If there's an air bubble under the teal, I really don't care because the chalk paste won't go through the teal portion, so I'm going to go through the silk screen. So I just want to make sure. Yeah, that's nice and you don't have to press down hard. I've got an ear bubble right here. I thought I felt something. So let me lift this back up and just move it down. You don't have to press the transfer down to the surface. Just gently press it, but just make sure, feel around, make sure there aren't any ear bubbles. And this feels good. Now I'm going to use a couple different color paste. This is my Ocean Mist. It's a very light blue, almost like a grayish blue. And I'm going to use that for my wording, the weather outside is frightful. And then I have some shimmer frost, which is a shimmery white. It's actually beautiful. Let me show you the texture of this. Our chalk paste should always be between, come, we have a chalk, blah, 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 can't talk. Texture should be somewhat between a sour cream and, cream and a yogurt. If your paste thickens up, Spritz it with a little bit of distilled water to thin it down and stir it up till you get the proper consistency. If it gets a little bit too um, thin, just leave the cover off the jar for a little while and it will thicken up. And you always want to use distilled water because minerals in tap water can interfere with the pigmentation of the paste and give you a color that you're not quite really happy with or it's not quite what you're looking for. Let me just stir this up, make sure this is a good consistency, that's good. And where did I put my blue? Here we go. Grab a little stir stick for that. This feels a little thick, but let me just stir it up a little bit more. Maybe that's all it needs. Okay, so I think I'm going to do my snowflakes in the shimmer frost in the white and the oh let it snow in the silver and then the print in the middle in the um, ocean mist. So let's get started. I'm going to grab a squeegee. And I'm just trying to think of what how I want to really do this. Let's see. Um, 
Okay, just trying to decide if I was going to use the paste and peel or another another method. Um, I think I will use the paste and peel. It's just a technique that gives me a little bit more leeway and I could do things a little bit more slowly than I would otherwise. So I'm using my Shimmer Frost and I'm going over my little dots, my little dots and my snowflakes here. Just applying the paste over the silk screen, making sure I have it covered. Then smoothing it and lifting off any excess paste. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side over here. Get my snowflake and my little dots of snow here. I'm going to do my swirl and my wording with the O in the silver, so I want to be careful not to go over that. I've got a few more little dots here. Okay, this looks good. Okay, so I'm going to put the excess back in the jar and I'm going to use my shimmer on my shimmer silver. Grab a clean squeegee and grab some of the silver and get my wording here. And then my swirl. <laughs> Smooth it up. Clean it off top of my little squirrel here. Grab a little bit more for over here. And you can see how quickly this goes actually. And like I said if I make a mistake all I have to do is remove it with water and a paper towel and fix my little mistake. Okay, I'm putting the excess back in here. Now basically, what I'm going to do, I'm, I said I'm going to use the paste and peel method. I've done the top three inches or whatever. I'm going to lift it up. I play, applied the paste and now I'm going to peel it up. I just need a little purchase down here. Grab this up. You always want to pull your transfer up from the top, bottom, left, or the right. And I'm going to just lift this up, take a little look at it, make sure I got coverage here. I need to get a little bit more. I missed the bottom of my little swirl there, so let me come back over here and get it. This keeps the paste from um, drying in the silk screen. Oops dropped it back down. Okay, I got that swirl and I need a little fix up over here. Let me fix that. Here we go. It looks good. Okay, so I've lifted it up. Paste and peel. Paste it remove the excess and then let it peel it up and then let it just sit. I'm not pressing it down. I'm gonna come over here and now use my um, Ocean Mist to do my print. Grab another clean squeegee and just apply this. By doing the paste and peel, by lifting it, I prevent the um, paste from drying in the silk screen, and it gives me a little bit more time to work at my leisure on coloring the different areas. So I don't have to feel so rushed. 
Our paste goes on liquid, but does dry to a hard finish, but it does take about possibly eight to 10 minutes. Our shimmers take a little bit longer to dry. So if it's gonna take me more than eight minutes to do this, I probably wanna use the paste and peel so that I lift the areas that I'm finished with up so they're not drying into the silk screen. Just kind of an easy rule of thumb in essence. So I'll just do it a little piece at a time. And I'm basically applying the paste, pushing it through the, the silk screen with my squeegee, removing any lines and any excess paste, putting it back in the jar and then going on to the next section. How simple and easy is this? Almost like magic, isn't it? Okay, so now I'm going to lift this up over the printed area. Then I'll check it out. Make sure everything looks good. Looking good here. I've even got my little comma there. That's fine. Then I'm going to just let it drop back down. And then I could do my let it snow in the silver. And for this, I'm grabbing a little bit larger of a squeegee. I just actually ended up getting some paste on this. Let me clean this off so it's a little bit easier to handle. Because my font is so much bigger, if I use a quicker, a larger squeegee, it just makes it go a little bit quicker. And we have all different sizes, all different size squeegees. And I'm gonna do this in the, in the shimmer silver. So I'm just gonna, oops, I didn't mean to put it there. I wanted to get the letters. Okay, let me go a little bit more over here. Okay, I'm gonna clean this up. I think I got one of my dots with the silver and I really wanted that to be white. I don't think anyone will notice. So using the larger squeegee allows me to apply the paste quicker. To a larger area. Be careful here and not cover that snowflake. So I'm going to come back in here with a smaller squeegee and get in the narrow areas. Put the excess paste back in my jar. And get the bottom of the swirl with a smaller squeegee. Okay, looking good. And then I'm gonna paste, do my peel again, lift it up. Oh, is that beautiful? Okay, I'm gonna just let it fall gently. I didn't lift up my little swirl here, that's fine. I think I could get the snowflakes finished quick enough that it doesn't become an issue. And I'm back to using my white shimmer frost paste. Now look at how quick this is going. No weeding, no playing around with a stencil. Quick, easy, and on chalkboard erasable. So if I make a little oops, 
no harm, no foul. I could fix it quick and easily. And of course our chalk paste can also be used on wood. Can also be, we could use um, basically chalk paste on just about any kind of surface. Some people have chalked their microwaves, chalked their dishwashers, chalked their um, washer and dryers, chalked the back window of their car. And when you're tired of it, just remove it. Now, if you want it a permanent image, you could use our inks. Our inks need to be heat set, but once they are, they're permanent. So that's just absolutely great for like on ceramics and um, clothing or fabric. If you're a quilter, imagine what you can do with some quilt blocks. The images that you can use and the wording or the phrases to make a custom personalized quilt for someone, how cool would that be? Okay, I'm wrapping this up. Applying the paste. I want to get my little dots here in my shimmer frost. Get all of them there. Smoothing it out, removing the excess, getting rid of my lines, and putting it back in my jar. And then I'm going to lift up the bottom here, take a look at it. And the reason you always lift from the top, the bottom, the left, or the right is because our transfers are like fabric because of the silk screen and the um, vinyl. You don't want to pull or tug on the diagonal. You don't want to inadvertently um, do that because it'd be like pulling on fabric on the bias. You don't want to stretch or distort that silk screen. Okay, I am going to set this aside to finish drying and actually show you how you can clean your transfer. Ideally, I would remove this transfer over to the sink and wash it at the sink, but let's pretend I've gotten it wet. Well, I'm going to get it wet on my surface. Because I don't have a camera over at the sink, you could also, of course, clean your transfers at your table if you wanted to, but it really, truly is easier at the sink. So I'm wetting the adhesive side, and then I'm going to flip this over and wet the front of it. And the easiest way to actually clean is to use a board eraser. This is one of our board erasers, kind of like um, those magic cleaners. I can't think of the name of them. I'm just going to wet it and clean the paste off my transfer. Now, our Chalk paste is water soluble, but some of our more highly pigmented chalk paste may actually stain your transfer or stain the vinyl. The board eraser does pretty good at making sure, or I should say diminishing any staining. But staining of the vinyl in no way impacts the usability of your transfer. Like I said, our transfers are, are um, reusable 8 to 12 times or more. So if your transfer becomes stained, don't worry about it. It won't affect the usability. It just doesn't look as pristine and as pretty as it did when it was brand new. Okay, so now I'm going to actually wipe up the rest of that with a little disinfecting wipe. See how quick and easy that went. I know I've used three colors that are kind of close. None of them are really very highly pigmented. but I think the three of them go good together and I think really we want the wording and the design to stand out as opposed to the color of the chalk paste. Just wanted to differentiate between the snowflakes and the wording. Okay, 
And now I'm going to lift this up and clean the, clean the adhesive side. Notice I sprayed the adhesive side before I set it down. Now this is a special mat and it would not stick to this, but occasionally I use a glass mat. So just as a matter of habit, if I'm going to clean at the table, I always spritz the adhesive side because I wouldn't want to put the adhesive down on glass without wetting it. And yes, our transfers can be used on glass. You can put this on a mirror. You can put it on your windows. Wouldn't this be, look nice on the windows? I'm actually toying with the idea of combining this with our snowflakes, our snowflake cutouts for our picture window. Haven't done it yet, but it's it's on my list of to-do things. Okay, so I want to make sure all the paste is out of the silk screen. And if you're not sure, just pick it up and hold it up to the light and see through to make sure there's no clumps or anything in the silk screen. And then when you have all the paste off of it, you just want to go across it and basically wipe off any of the lint that you picked up from the fuzzing cloth. It's as easy as that. And actually, if I put this adhesive side up on my microfiber part of the fuzzing cloth, I could actually speed dry it a little bit. I'm going to need two for this, but let me grab another fuzzing cloth. Okay, I don't have one handy, so I'm going to just set this aside the way it is and let it dry. And when it's dry, I will put its backer on it and then I could store it. Okay, I can get that out of the way. Dry my surface here. We have a paper towel, and then we'll get back to putting some embellishments on this. So as you can see, cleanup's easy. Same thing with my um, board eraser. Just rinse that under the sink. My little um, squeegee and my stir sticks, same thing. I'll just take them over the sink and wash them up. Easy peasy. Oops. And of course, put the caps back on my jar so my paste doesn't dry out. these things over to the side, get them out of the way, so that when I put my chalkboard back over here, I don't get any paste or anything on it. Let me clean this up. But how quick and easy of a project is this? Oh my goodness. Seriously, we're at just a little over a half hour, and we're done with the board as far as putting the image on it. And halfway done with cleanup, all I have to do is clean up my squeegees and my stir sticks. Okay.
I want to make sure this is totally dry before I put the ribbon on it because I don't want to smudge it or smear it. What do you think? How simple and easy, right? Get my paste out of the way a little bit now. Oops. Now I did put this up near the top because I'm planning on putting a ribbon across the bottom. sure this is dry okay and I already cut this long enough to wrap around so I'm gonna flip this over and basically just tie it to the back this way when I get tired of it I can remove it easily enough and reuse my ribbon if I want what the heck right And if this needs a little bit of adjusting, I could always do it with a glue dot. Okay. Obviously, I don't want these showing. Let me flip this back over. Put a thing of paste and get the bottom. There we go. So I wanted to do a little bit of more of fiddling with my little bow here. Just kind of adjusting it a little bit. I don't really like the um, pipe cleaner in the middle, so I'm gonna cover that up with another ribbon. Actually, thinking maybe we'll just hide that with a little um, silver ribbon. I don't know. Almost, I'm thinking I don't like it. I was switching these back and forth. I think I almost just like them right on top of each other, kind of like this kind of a look. So, let me grab that other ribbon. Add that to it and be done. I cut off my pipe cleaner here. I'm going to add my little silver ribbon right in the middle. And cover up that pipe cleaner. And there we go. And then I'm going to just tie it in the back. I usually don't use my transfer trimmers for cutting fabric or ribbon, but I left the scissors over on the counter, so there we go. So basically this needs a little more poofing up here, but in essence, just gonna put the little ribbon right here. What do you think? Too much? Should I flatten it a little bit? Maybe smush it down a little? I really don't want it to be detracting from the words. I just wanted to kind of add to it. 
let me know what you think. And I'm gonna just glue, glue dot this in place. And then I think it's ready for hanging. Thank you so much for watching this evening. I surely do appreciate it. Of course, maybe it could just go up at the top in a corner. Hmm. Let me know what you think. Better in the corner or better on the bottom? I'm going to open to both ideas. Thank you so much for watching. I surely do appreciate it. Have a wonderful weekend. See you soon.